sort of call this like the tired iron series. <laughs> this is a uh, old Hydrax, probably built, I'm gonna say probably mid 90s, something like that. They had a series before this one right here, it's Hydrax also, but it didn't look like this. And then they come out with this style right here. This is actually a good machine. This is a 511. They had a, uh, they had a 411, a 511, a 611, and a 711 E machine is what they had. And so this was actually used to uh, cut trees down. I can remember when we were running the old bell tree cutters, well, I wanted one of these things so bad. And Hydrax was in fierce competition with John Deere. They were kind of two of the main ones that were building felling machines like this right here and, and you know, cutting trees and stuff. And this was still kind of right before Tiger Cat came, came into play. And, well, they were, uh, Deere and Hydrax were battling. The same people that built the Prentice Loaders built these machines right here too and these were these were good machines i mean they were they were really nice on the inside too we actually demoed one of these one time we demoed a uh 611 that's what we demoed look for wasps there's a wasp nest up in the top up there i don't see any on it They actually started making the calves pretty nice on on this machine here. This was the first piece of logging equipment that I ever got into that had what I would call, quote, a, a nicer style calf here. See, this machine don't have, but uh, showing 7,300 hours on the hour meter right there. Let's see the... The key was on in it, which it, I'm sure batteries are out of it or they've been dead for a long, long time. There. Yeah, ain't saying anything, but. See, Blunt was the parent company of it. Let's see, right there. You can see it right there. And then all of this got absorbed by Caterpillar. When Caterpillar picked up the Apprentice brand, like that loader over, like our old loader. And then they kind of, Caterpillar already had rubber tire cutters like this. And then they, they kind of evolved it all together there. But so the way this machine worked was you had two pedals over there. The right pedal in the floor made it go forward and the left pedal made it go backwards. And then these two pedals right here worked your, your main grapple arms on your saw head. So when you went to cut through the tree, you, you hit one of them down to close it and then you hit the other one to open the clamps. And then you had a joystick over here on this side that just like a front end loader that worked your up and down on your boom and all that stuff and your accumulator arms your second arms right there and then you got a throttle and then this other is going to be a high and low i believe it's what this one is right here let's see here yeah that was your transmission selector speed is what that was but these machines were were, were pretty good machines they did real well just drove it with the steering wheel of course, this one would have to have some new, some new windows in it. Well, to be able to see out of it, they done frosted over pretty bad on this one. This one's got 34 inch tires on it. It's probably got, I can't tell how that to open the screen here to see, and I can't get the, you have to undo these right here, unscrew them to get to the engine. This one's probably got a Cummins in it. They put Cummins in a lot of them. I 
This one had a saw, saw head on it. It's got a disc on it that does the cutting. See, there's the teeth right there on it. This one's got a, uh, a bunching head on it to run in pine plantation wood. You could cut, you could cut big timber with it too, but it was more better suited for, for the plantation wood because the tower on it was not real tall. But you could do big wood with it. You just had to kind of be careful uh, cutting with it there. So a lot of people we will choker slides on it to hook chokers in the pull machines out we had some of them on ours too where you if you got it stuck you could quickly hook to it real quick and pull it out They articulate it right in the middle. Our dealer around here for these things was a warrior tractor, and they sold a pile of these things too. I mean. So your fuel tank and everything was back here on the back of them, back here in these, uh, they put all that stuff at the, as far back on these machines as they could possibly get them so that it had the weight on the back. See the motor, the motor on them sitting way deep in the back of them. On this one here, I believe on this side is going to be your, I don't know if this is a fuel tank or the oil tank on this side right here, but uh, Fuel and oil, one was on one side and the other one was on the other side. This one's probably more than likely the oil tank right here with it having two sight glasses on it right there. So you had this and the John Deere rubber tire cutters that were the front runners on building these style machines like this and then later on in the 90s there you had a uh, tiger cat tiger cat come along in the 90s and they started working on they really focused on these on these type machines like this right here it was kind of their their main thing that they went after these and also track cutters both and started working on perfecting them and like i said hydrax has been absorbed uh long since uh been sold a lot of the old logging stuff has always amazed me at how it's uh been sold and bought out and, and changed hands over the years I've got some messages from people wanting to know how we did during the storm, the Hurricane uh, Zeta or Zeta, however they say it. We ended up getting about 24 hours straight of rain and the wind like what we're getting right now is about like what we had during the night. Maybe there was some a little bit worse than this, but it wasn't too bad. We blow down some dead stuff here, there and yonder, but the rain, the amount of rain that we got was just uh, crazy. 
we had uh, here, we had over three inches of rain in that 24 hour time period. So it is, uh, the ground's pretty well saturated. Uh, it's still a lot of water running off. The wind is still really bad right now. A lot of, a lot of big gusts still coming up. And so, you know, no, no damage here. I know going over on up through Alabama and uh, over in Georgia, they had a good bit of trees down and things like that. But so I ran back over there. I was going to film another video this morning and that kind of fell through for me. So I, I had some, I, I always keep a lot of footage and, but nothing really suited me for what I was wanting to put out today. So I ran over there, filmed that. The people that own that actually came by today while I was over there. And, and uh, Hank with Hamiltonville Farms is coming up here into the chainsaw class uh, Saturday, Friday. And he had hit me up here, it's been a month or so ago, about doing a will it crank video and i talked to him about doing one on some of that stuff and it just kind of that didn't really work out so they came by today over there and talked to him again about it they really ain't, they ain't want to mess with it and so that's fine but uh very cool i like looking at the at the old machines and and checking them out it's like i said I got the saw class coming up this week gonna be busy with that people coming in here to, tomorrow night which will be friday night I doubt we'll be able to work Friday. I, uh, it's, it's so wet here now uh, that uh, pretty much that rain that we got shot the ground because it, it didn't really rain all at one time. It just kind of steady rain. Saw class this weekend and then uh, the climbing competition coming up in uh, Kingston, Georgia. The details for it's down below the uh, address to it there. It's open to the public. Going to be there all three days, me and Jill will. And going to be a good time if you're after buying a chainsaw or want to check out some, stop by there and uh, we'll put some chats on you and you can run the saw. So it'll be a good time. So I'm going to let y'all go. Appreciate y'all watching. We'll catch y'all later. Later, taters.